So hi everyone, this is Terry from lowvision.co.uk and it would really help if you would subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link below and also if you click on the little bell at the side of it, it'll let you know when I post the next video and that would be great if you could do that. Um, I haven't posted for quite some time um, because I've been struggling really. Um, and my head's been all over the place. So for those of you that, that don't know, um, I was registered partially sighted um, just over 18 months ago. And earlier this year, I was registered um, severely sight impaired, which is blind. A lot of people think that blind means that you have no vision whatsoever. And that's really not the case at all. In fact, I think the stats say that it's something like 8% of people, if that, have no vision at all. So when you see a person with a guide dog or with, with a white cane, then it's likely that they do have some residual vision. Um, they may have pretty good vision, but not as good as a sighted person, or they may have very poor vision. And there's a whole raft in, in between of, of that, really. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, my, my vision, I've been having injections in my eyes, um, for a good nine, 10 months. And a couple of weeks ago, I had, um, a cataract removed from my left eye. Um, and a couple of years ago, I had a cataract removed from my right eye, um, with the hope that that would improve things a little bit, but it hasn't. Um, in fact, it's made things a little bit different, not worse, different. Um, things are brighter, um, but not with as much clarity. Um, and there wasn't a great deal of clarity to start with. So my, my vision is that I have no peripheral vision whatsoever. Um, so beyond looking straight at something, I can't see above, below or either side. And what I can see is extremely blurred. Um, there's also like black sections completely out. Um, so it's like, it's like a dotty kind of vision, but the dots that I can see through are very, very blurred. So I can't see anybody's face and I can't see any detail. But if I'm close enough, sort of really close to my eye, then I might see something a little bit clearer. Um, that doesn't really explain it very well, but it's very difficult trying to explain to somebody um, what you can see and what you can't see. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I went for a review at the hospital after my cataract and with the intentions of restarting the ILEA eye injections because um, there was a buildup of fluid again behind my retina. But they've decided that it's not appropriate to do that um, because my vision is so low now that, that there really isn't any point. Um, that really made me think um, and it seemed really final to me. Um, I asked if I was going to lose the tiny bit of vision that I have left and they said that they can't possibly predict that um, and they'll continue seeing me on a two to three monthly basis, but it'll be for reassurance only, no treatment because there isn't any treatment that can make anything any better now. Um, I was amazingly upset and I guess in my heart of heart, I knew that anyway, um, but it's when they say that to you that you think, well, wow, this, this is it. So I was quite upset from that appointment and I was making my way back home and we have, um, I got on the bus, I walked to the bus station, um, I asked for some help getting to the um, correct stand um, and they're always great. They, they, somebody will walk with me and I'll link their arm and they'll get me to the right place. Um, getting on a bus is, is really difficult um, when you can't actually see the bus numbers or anything like, like that. And when you've got a cane, people tend not to 
um, or seem not to want to sit at the side of you for some reason. Um, so they don't talk to you um, and they, it feels, although they're probably not, but it feels like they're avoiding you. Um, and maybe that's because they just don't know what to say to you. Um, and it's difficult because I can't see where to get off, but I have an app on my phone called Move It, which is brilliant. You put in your starting point and where you want to be, and then it'll show you all the bus and train routes and the walking routes and everything. You select the route that you want, and then it'll tell you how to get to the bus stop, what time the bus is coming, and then it'll also alert you two stops before you need to get off, which is brilliant. And then it'll alert you the stop before you need to get off as well. So that makes things a lot easier, but it's quite nerve wracking. Every time I set off on a journey, um, I, I do worry, but I'm getting better. Um, but the point of the story is when I got off the bus at home, um, and was walking from the bus stop to home, there's a school called Sandal Primary School, um, maybe six, seven minutes walk from my house. And I have to go past that school. And this particular time I was already quite upset and my mind was thinking about what I'd been told at the hospital. And I was just walking along and people sometimes park on a pavement there. And I've had an episode in the past where I've accidentally hit a guy's car with, with my cane and because he was part sort of a good half to three quarters on the, on the pavement. Um, and he jumped out of the car and faced up to me, squared up to me and was effing and blinding, swearing at me and shouting. Um, and there was literally nothing I could do um, apart from just put my head down and, and walk on. This time, so I was a little bit nervous anyway. This time, as I was walking past the school, I suddenly heard this car horn, um, really loud beep. Um, and it scared the living daylights out of me. And I, I thought I was actually, that I'd walked into the road. So I was I was really scared because I thought this this car was coming head on to me and beat the horn, but I wasn't on the road at all. I felt around with McCain, looked around, and I was actually on the path. And this woman had decided that it was easier for her to pull up onto the pavement um, because she couldn't get anywhere else. So pull up onto the pavement, and then she could just dump the car there and pick her daughter up. So she shouted out of the window to, for me to watch out because her car's there. And it really did scare me. So I walked up to where the voice was coming from um, and sa said to her said to her that, um, you know, I thought I'd walked into the road and she'd really, really frightened me. So she, so she, her response was, well, where the hell do you expect me to, to park? I need, I need to pick my little girl up. She said, so I can't park anywhere else. It's not my fault that there aren't any spaces. So I just said, well, it's not my fault if I happen to hit your car with my cane as I'm walking past on the pavement. And her reaction was, touch my car with that cane and I'll bloody run over it, which I thought was appalling, really. So I kind of walked on and... The impact that that has is quite significant in, in that I was angry, I was frustrated, I was scared because, like I say, I thought I'd walked into the road and I actually hadn't. And the impact that that has on me is, is that it really sets me back. It takes a lot of time to build up the confidence to actually go out with my cane um, by myself. And when I do pluck up the confidence and something like that happens, it really sets me back. So I end up then staying in the house for a week, two weeks, three weeks, not wanting to go out for the fear of something similar happening again. And the fact that this has happened twice in three or four months in the same place at Sandwell Primary School, I don't like having to take that route at all. And really, that's the only route out of my village. So it's quite disconcerting and 
the thing that I need to do is I need to build up my own confidence really and deal with it better um, because that woman won't give this a second thought at all. She'll pick a girl up, she'll drive off, she'll go home, they'll play, everything else. She won't give it a second thought. Whereas me, it stays with me, with me for a long time and affects things that I do. It affects my mood. It makes me a hermit, like a prisoner in my own home. And I just wish that people would think a little bit more before they do things. So many people will just walk into you when you've got your cane um, because they're on their mobile phones or they're talking to their friends. So they don't look out. I get very apologetic and I'm the one that always says sorry um, when actually it's not my fault. So going out with a sighted guide, like with my partner or my son, then it's awesome. I don't feel any fear. I don't feel any intimidation. I go out, I still use my cane, even though I'm holding on to one of their elbows. And life is good. Um, so the awesome thing is people, because people can be so, so helpful. I've got fantastic friends, neighbours, they couldn't do any more for me than they do. They're just brilliant. But the reverse side of that is that the bad thing is that some people are, how do I say, some people are assholes and they make life a misery. And there's no need for it. There's no need to park on the pavement. There's no need to walk into me and barge me to one side. So I just give myself a hard time with things like that. And I think I really need to um, book myself up, dust myself down and get on with things. Life as a blind person is really hard. And I'm not saying that to get people to feel sorry for me. It is hard. But I think in many ways it's made me a better person because I am so much more thoughtful. Um, I think I'm a nicer person all around. I don't get as frustrated with things as I used to. I've got so much more patience because you have to have patience because everything takes so much longer to do um, when when you can't see. So I think it has made me a better person. Um, I listen to things so much more. I get my information from other sources like my hearing, my sense of smell is on point. I often say when I'm out with my partner, oh, I can smell grapes or I can smell this or I can smell soap or I can smell such and such. And he's always quite amazed because whatever I've smelled, we are actually passing that particular shop. So I can smell shops and cafes out too, which is which is pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, that, that's all I wanted to say really. Um, I guess I haven't said a great deal, um, but I just wanted to touch base with everybody and let people know why I haven't been posting. Um, so I will get back onto a schedule and post some more things shortly. I've got some ideas on what to post. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much for everybody for your support because whenever I do come across anything like the incident the other week, people rally around, my friends, my family, it's awesome and I get so much support from the YouTube community as well so thank you so much and please don't forget to help me out by subscribing and clicking on the notification bell and that would be awesome and I will catch you all later. Thank you. Bye.